A few days on, it's still strange to think that another Overwatch League season has come to a close, leaving us in the void of the off-season that will distract us over the coming months. As I promised during my last video though, before I start jumping into off-season news and looking back at each team's whole season performance throughout 2020, today I'll be grading each of their playoff showings. I should have mentioned before I begin that these grades aren't just being assigned on how far a team went in playoffs, but more importantly on how they performed compared to pre-playoff expectations, and in hindsight of the opponents they went up against. These grades will also be on a scale of A to F, and aside from pre-playoff expectations, won't be weighted very heavily on the team's respective regular season results. So, with all the quantifiers out of the way then, let's get straight into it. I think we'll tackle each side in the order that they are eliminated from the playoffs, meaning that we start with the Houston Outlaws, and perhaps unsurprisingly, they get an F. Admittedly this is probably too harsh, but when you boom around 95% of everyone's playoff brackets in the very first game of the playoffs, you're gonna be in a bit of trouble. Moreover, this loss came against Boston of all teams, a side that managed only two wins throughout the entire regular season, and was almost unanimously written off heading into the playoffs also. In the Outlaws' defence, the Farrakomp Houston ran was viable in certain situations, as proven by Sol later on during the playoffs, and Boston, to their credit, seemed to have a really good read and understanding of the meta. But the fact that the Outlaws ran the Farrah almost non-stop, with their players swapping in and out on really odd roles, is just indefensible. A loss to the Uprising is bad enough, but when it's easy to become the first eliminated team from the 2020 Overwatch League season, when Houston were probably looking at reaching the double elimination stage, I don't see any way I can avoid giving them a failing grade. Next up though are the Vancouver Titans, who I've awarded a D. Again, perhaps slightly harsh, especially when you consider how strong Washington were and how well they ended up performing. But I was hoping to see more from this young Titans outfit. There were flashes of potential throughout the latter half of the season, particularly from players like Shockwave and KSAA, but if anything, they started to look worse as the season came to a close, with this convincing playoff defeat undermining what has been a rocky and unsuccessful second season for the Vancouver organisation, earning them this below average grade. We now move across to the APEC region for the first time, with the next team under the spotlight being the London Spitfire, another side who I'm handing a D grade to. In many ways they mirror the Titans, being a young team with promising talents full of massive potential like Glister and Bernard. Similar to Vancouver though, this promise was never fully realised. Despite taking a map off of the Hunters in their only playoff match, I didn't think the series was particularly close, and considering that Chengdu were nowhere near as tough as the Justice, I'm left with no choice really but to match the Spitfire's grade to the one that I gave to the Titans. Moving back across to NA again, the Toronto Defiant are the next team on the chopping block, although they're the first squad I'm handing a C to. Their 3-2 series defeat to the Gladiators was a really competitive back and forth affair, which honestly was much closer than I originally predicted. Whilst having Agilities play the Hog made them predictable from a compositional point of view, for the most part it seemed to work really well, with Logic's putting in a strong display himself. I think a lot of people expected the Defiant to struggle in the playoff meta and wrote them off, and they were certainly expected to lose to a decent Gladiators side, so to come away with a 3-2 loss was a good showing I thought, so I believe a C is certainly deserved here. The Boston Uprising however are going to receive my first grade of an A, even if it is potentially a little generous. Obviously a large part of this is down to their upset win over the Houston Outlaws in the opening round, but I also want to give them further praise for a point I mentioned earlier, their understanding and read of the playoff meta. Outside of the Washington Justice, in my opinion, Boston's tank line of Fusions and Punk displayed the strongest tank play of any of the early round teams, with the uprising looking really comfortable and actually competitive on their whole compositions. The regular season was undoubtedly a massive failure for the Boston organisation, but considering that 95% of us had them nailed on for an early playoff exit, the uprising can be extremely happy with how the playoffs panned out, and I reckon that due to giving the rain a decent contest, they had a shot of taking down the gladiators or fuel had they been picked in a different order, so that's why I'm going to say they deserve an A. Speaking of Dallas though, their initials perfectly present how the playoffs went, a disappointing failure, and this earns them a D. Again I recognise that they lost to what was almost an unstoppable playoff Washington team, but to be eliminated from the playoffs in such a one-sided manner against your former star DPS player Decay, who the team clearly and publicly fell out with, is a definite low for the fuel. Outside of the control map Li Zhang and the second half of the assault map Volskaya, this match wasn't really close at all, with the Justice dominating proceedings. Dallas came into the playoffs with next to no expectations, and yet they still managed to disappoint, and for that reason they have to get a D. Once again we now return to the APEC region, where we have to discuss the final two sides who are unable to reach the double elimination stage of the playoffs. Firstly the Chengdu Hunters, who achieve a C. The Hunters are a strange one, as on paper their results indicate a strong playoff showing, easily getting past London before just falling short to New York in a tough 3-2 match. 
I'm not so sure though, as in many ways I kind of feel like we didn't get to see the full potential of Chengdu here. The meta couldn't really suit them more, with Armin able to utilise the ball every map in competitions that were actually sort of in line with the meta for once, and momentum seemed to be with them heading into playoffs also. It wasn't a surprise that New York beat them at the end of the day, but at the same time a 3-2 scoreline in of itself wasn't that much of a shock either when you look back on it, especially when you consider how underwhelming the Excelsior were in the double elimination bracket afterwards. For that reason I find myself with little choice but to give them an average grade, and I think retrospectively they might regret not running more of late young on the hog besides Armin instead of Elster on the diva. I thought that comp against the Spitfire looked particularly good, and given how prevalent the hog became as the playoffs progressed, it might have given the Hunters that extra edge had they used it against New York. The Spark on the other hand are a much easier side to give a grade to, which I brutally put down as an E. I understand Seoul had a brilliant compositional understanding of the meta, and ended up our eventual runners up, but that doesn't excuse how poor Hangzhou's performance was here. Looking back, it kind of replicated a similar series from the main melee, where Seoul were good, but the Spark just made so many mistakes and played so poorly that you had to conclude that they lost the series more than the Dynasty won it. With the amount of talent on Hangzhou's roster, coupled together with what was definitely Seoul's worst display throughout the entire playoffs, I can only conclude that the Spark were Apex's most disappointing postseason performer this year, and although likely harsh, I feel like they should receive an E for this. Swapping back to North America, the LA Gladiators were the next team eliminated after losing to the Florida Mayhem, and they've been given a C grade. For the most part, this is exactly where the Gladiators were predicted to be eliminated, and on their day they were simply just not as good as the Mayhem. Throughout the playoffs I thought their DPS and tank lines put in some strong displays, and they didn't really ever surprise or disappoint us, making them the perfect recipients of a C. The same though cannot be said for the degraded Paris Eternal, who had a rather rough playoff outing. To be fair, I didn't expect them to perform great after seeing the meta develop, but their opening game loss to Atlanta did come as a slight surprise, with the Eternals teamwork fundamentally letting them down against a strong showing from the rain. The loss afterwards for Justice didn't come as a shock given the momentum they were riding at the time, so I can't really punish Paris further for that. Ultimately, the Eternals inexperience and one-sided nature was highlighted heading into playoffs, with the team seeming a little too dependent on Sparkle in a meta that didn't really favour his hero pool. That loss to Atlanta ultimately sees them drop from a C to a D, although compared to others with this grade, a large part of this was due to the high expectation they had set themselves from what was otherwise a brilliant regular season for a promising Eternal side. Funnily enough, even if there was a weak gap, the next team to be eliminated was actually the Atlanta Reign, and I've awarded them a B for these playoffs. Oddly enough, they were one of the few sides to fully commit to the Sombra Reaper Rush composition for most of the playoffs without trying much else, and this unfortunately proved their undoing eventually, as they were simply weaker in this mirror when they were eliminated by the Mayhem. Overall though, the playoffs proved to be a successful adventure for the Reign, the highlight being the 3-2 upset of Paris, and it must also be mentioned they even managed to take a map off of San Francisco also. We never really set the world on fire with their play, but like last year they added some upset spice, and considering they slightly exceeded my expectations for them, I certainly believe a B is warranted, even if it is slightly lower than this next team. I've already spoiled it, but I've also given a B to the LA Valiant, although I will stress that unlike Atlanta, this is a very high B and almost an A. I should make note that the Valiant were fortunate the playoff meta worked to their Ash Tracer strengths, but once again they executed it brilliantly, with a fantastic win over Florida, before even causing Philly some issues despite the 3-0 scoreline. They get the most credit though for how they played in their eliminating loss to Washington. Outside of the fusion, they were the only team that took a map off of them, and a lot of that was down to their use of Zen to pressure Janu and Decay, whilst also effectively taking out an often isolated aim god, strategies that most other sides didn't utilise against Washington. Although they were eventually defeated, it highlighted the valiant strength in coaching and team coordination that have been their backbone all season long, and culminated in a strong playoff showing. I don't think they can be disappointed in the slightest, and ultimately a high B certainly reflects the performance they showed here. Heading back across the Pacific to the APAC region, the Guangzhou Charge, like the Spark, are also recipients of a poor E grade. Again, probably I'm being too critical here, but after extra days of prep, losing 3-0 in both playoff matches is a massive disappointment and underachievement for what would have otherwise been a strong APAC side nearly all season long. Also, unlike Paris, I actually thought the charge would be quite strong in this playoff meta and were my favourites beside New York to progress alongside Shanghai, but they just seem to have completely wrong read on the meta, playing way too much rush, but particularly also Farrah comps, sometimes in really weird spots like King's Row Point A defence. This was a squad like Hangzhou that has so much talent and potential, but didn't deliver when it mattered most. Their 3-0 loss to Seoul can be somewhat excused given the dynasty's retrospective strength, but their one-sided sweep by the Excelsior cannot. 
particularly after you consider how close the Hunters played New York a week earlier, thus earning them this abysmal grade. I don't want to spend too much time on the Florida Mayhem, who I've given a B, as I think they performed pretty much exactly how I predicted, with a 4th place finish in NA probably being a fair reflection at the end of the day. The playoffs probably could have gone a little better, they did lose to the Valiant and only finished ahead of them by virtue of playing Washington later in the bracket. In terms of grading and power ranking, the Mayhem is certainly lower than the Valiant, but considering that they took convincing victories over the Gladiators and Reign, I think they are just about deserving of a low B, although considering they finished pretty much how I expected, without any major surprises or upsets, I could understand those that would want to give them a C here. New York, however, is a side that I am going to give a C to, after another unsuccessful campaign. It was a weird one really, as they sandwiched two quite strong displays against the Dragons and Charge, with an opening and closing series that were very rough to watch. The fact that they almost slipped at the first hurdle against Chengdu highlighted that this team lacked the quality and meta understanding to really push on in the APAC playoffs, and their very lacklustre defeat to Seoul right at the end of it all was a sad conclusion to what was an uninspiring Excelsior season. But hey, at least they didn't choke, right? In terms of this grading though, I can't really punish them. They were the third best team in APAC in terms of this meta, with Shanghai and Seoul being really top notch as we saw by the grand finals. They probably regret some of the decisions they made in terms of composition and style, perhaps playing a little too much of players like Sebi Olby. That said, I thought it was an average showing overall, and that's why I've kept them at a C. Rounding out the first two weeks of playoffs, the last eliminated team from an A was the Washington Justice, who received a very easy A. Yes, they did get decayed just before the playoffs, and yes, they did one trick of composition that happened to be very strong in the playoff meta. Can I penalise them for this though? Well, no. At the end of the day, they still had to execute the composition and put in strong player displays. Decay was obviously marvellous, flanked by Janu, who had a really strong playoff run on Hog. It cannot be understated, however, how good a player like Stitch was. For someone who saw his rise during Apex, it was so good to see him show off how talented of a player he is, having been consigned to the bench for Vancouver for most of last season. And personally, I thought he was Washington's most consistent and best player of his playoff run. Plenty of teams had the opportunity to take the Decay train down, but aside from the Valiant, for the most part, Washington were unchallenged, and it took the second NAC to finally defeat them. At the start of the playoffs, even with Decay, if you told me that the Justice would have finished third, I'd have burst out laughing and called you an idiot. The fact that this came a reality emphasizes how big of an achievement their playoff run was, not forgetting also that they were a map away from upsetting our grand final champions. For this, they have to get an A. Now we arrive at our final four, with the first team we need to discuss being the Philadelphia Fusion, who I've awarded a grade of C. I don't really need to spend too much time explaining this, they got to the final four, which I believe was the expectation of most people to be honest. Grand finals week however was a bit of a nightmare. I do sympathise that Philly's greatest strength was the rush comp, and on the back of quarantine they probably struggled to adapt to the shift to double sniper and hog priority. Two back-to-back 3-0s -back though were a major disappointment given the quality of talent on Philly's roster that most regarded as a super team at the start of the season. It's for that reason that I can't give them anything more than a C. Some may think they deserve less, but you have to recognise they at least made the final four, with convincing victories over everyone else in NA, including finally taking down Washington in the decay train, so they deserve at least an average grade for that. As for the Shanghai Dragons, in a lot of ways this was one of the hardest teams I had to grade, and in the end I settled on a B. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? They had an excellent playoffs, dominating the APAC region, which included a tough win over the Dynasty in the winner's final to confirm them as the number one seed. They then took the shock to five maps after easily dispatching Philly in the winner's quarter final. Their elimination at the hands of a Dynasty in a rematch once again went to five maps and it was a really close back and forth set. In terms of pre playoff expectations, though, didn't most of us think they were almost guaranteed to make the final? That's really their only problem and only downer on their entire playoff performance. Other than our final two, they had little trouble against every other opponent they faced, and even those final two they took to five maps on every occasion. Yet it still feels like the Dragons underwhelmed when looking back at the playoffs as a whole. Maybe you can give me your thoughts down below, but I just felt because of this I couldn't give them an A, for it was otherwise a great playoff showing, and that's why I settled on a B. Last but not least, we have our grand final pairing of the Seoul Dynasty and the San Francisco Shock, who I believe both certainly deserve the highest grade of an A for their playoff performances. Seoul came in with very low expectations at every hurdle, and were written off against nearly all of their opponents from the very start of their playoff run against the Spark. There's no denying that the meta fell nicely into their hands, but it was only through their brilliant execution of hog compositions that the Dynasty were able to cause problems to everyone they faced. Their loser's final triumph over the Dragons in many ways was an even more important series than the Grand Final itself, 
Seoul finally overcoming and getting revenge on a Shanghai side that had dominated the APAC region all year, whilst also inflicting one of Seoul's most painful losses, the May Melee Final. Not a single member of their starting six can be disappointed with their overall performance, so even with the grand final defeat, I don't think there'd be any questions about giving them an A grade. For the shock, meanwhile, a second Overwatch League trophy on the back of a perfect playoff run makes them a slam dunk guarantee for receiving an A grade. Hell, if I increase my scale, they would certainly receive an A plus or an S grade. They've simply been that good. The NA qualifiers, outside of a slight scare against Washington, were surprisingly simple. And then in three very challenging contests against Seoul, Shanghai and Seoul again, they proved without question why they are the best and most clutch team we have in the league. Led by Krusty, who if he hadn't already cemented his spot as the ghost of Overwatch coaches. Some of these grades might have been a little too generous or harsh, but at the end of the day, this is just my opinion, and I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments below. Now though, it's time to turn our attention to the off-season, and there's already been some major changes from a few of the teams, so I'll be reporting on these over the coming days. So if you have enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like or subscribe, or follow me on Twitter or Discord. Until next time though, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.